Welcome back to What Are T Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the FB207 Tier 8 British SPG located on the westbourne of Stud Yankee, and this one is under the command of McHammered. And yes, we might have got hammered as well because we weren't featuring a lot of RT replays recently, but we've got a whole line of them lined up for you. A long line of them. Well, this RT is one that most people try and rush to get through so they can get to the Conqueror gun carriage. It's kind of unusual because it's got two different guns, either the 5.5 inch, which is the same one you find on the Crusader, or the 6 inch, which is basically 152 millimeters caliber. So you have to pick a, your choice. You either pick a low caliber 5.5, but it has got a faster fire rate, or you get the slightly higher cal caliber, but it's got a much better damage. Okay, McCammon's decided to go a little further down the tree line. Did knock a few trees down when he located himself, and that might give the enemy a clue as to where he is, but let's see if the enemy RT is aware, because it's a Lorraine 155 -51. Rounds out. Well, his first shot in the STB-1 was near, but it was only a splash. Still, he got 99 hit points. Now, depends on which gun he's got as to which alpha he's going to have. And he's loaded when well, he's got 650 alpha. And that tells me he's got the 6 inch gun, which is basically 152.4. Rounds out in the STB one. This time round, he does strike him and gets a critical hit as well. 278, which is a non penetrating round, but it's still a pretty good one. Now he is going to get stunned with this gun. He shouldn't, by all rights, get stunned with the 5.5 inch, but Wargaming does actually give stun on that one. It's only supposed to be guns that are over 15 centimetres that get stunned. And the 5.5 inch is actually under 15 centimetres. Rounds out. Good aim. Oh, excellent shot! In fact, RNG helped him there because the shill seemed to veer to the left and the tank turned to the left at the same time and so it looked like uh, luck was in his favour and RNG Jesus was looking after him. Oh, should I have said that? I don't know. Well, we'll say RNG was looking after him. Rounds out. And again he gets a hit. This time in the rear of the STB-1. Gets some stun. Not bad. You can see his reload time is 24.35. The standard book reload is 28.76. Okay, he's got another target to aim for, the STG. Sitting in the riverbed. Oh, he's still got a hit. 289. That's a good one. So it's 650 alpha with a penetration of only 38 millimeters. To get a pen, you'd actually have to th hit something with a very thin skin. There's a few tank destroyers that fit that sort of uh, that sort of specification, or an RT for that matter, because they have fairly thin armor as well. But most of these tanks, well, I'm afraid he's probably not going to penetrate the tanks, but he's probably going to do some damage to the enemy uh, TDs. Now, he thinks there's an arty up in there. I'm not sure if he saw a tracer, but he will need to keep moving there, because if the enemy RT thinks it's personal, then he might decide to fire back. He's having another look in that direction. I think... His own team thinks that's where the RT is. So they must be getting hit from this particular location. And that's why he's firing over there. We haven't seen any tracer, but there he is. So he was absolutely right. His first shot gets 65 and he gets some stun assist. And the Lorraine's got absolutely hammered. He's about to go out and he's out the game. So that's good. So he's seen to his own opposition. In fact, I suspect those shots into the bushes probably forced the Lorraine to leave that area and come out of cover because if he stayed in there, then 
McCammer was going to put another round in there. So well done. You literally uh, beat the bushes and out springs the bird and then the guys bag them. That's a kind of hunting analogy, I suppose, for those who don't hunt. Jaeger root. Rabs out. Oh, kill shot! <laughs> he overwhelmed him. Beautiful. He went blind on the, or long spotted, but he still put the round in. Doesn't matter if he knocks any trees down now, because there's no enemy arty to counter him. And he doesn't really have to relocate unless, of course, he wants to get a better angle on the enemy. That T-54 Mod 1's though has moved up to the cops at the north of the map and our Astron Rex has had to pull back. And it's quite right too because the T-54 Mod 1 is actually quite powerful. It is a Tier 8 Premium. Oh, and he's got company. There's an STB-1 up there as well. And yeah, the Astron didn't survive it. We're one down on the enemy at the moment, but there's plenty of targets for Macamo to fire at. And he's now looking to get a shot into that Progetto, and he keeps rocking backwards and forwards. And he takes a round because of that. Yeah, whenever a tank does something very, very mechanical, something repetitive, that's what Artie pounces on. They see somebody doing that, and they think, aha, okay, he's just rocking backwards and forwards. I know where he's going to be. I'll just put a round into him. Same thing's true of other tanks which move up to shoot, then pull back to hide. If you know a tank's going to be keep doing that, you just put the round in there. And he managed to lob that round in underneath the roof on the enemy. They've equals the score now, but the T-54 Mod 1 is getting closer and closer to the railway line. Luckily, he's being stopped by a Death Star and an Object 907. And the 907 is more than a match for T-54 Mod 1. And McCammon's round one, we didn't see where that one went. And also, surprisingly, he's getting closer and closer to that T-54. But I think the reasoning behind it is that if he can get closer, he might have a quicker reaction time on him. And it also might help him with the angles on this TNH and this ST2. Okay, he doesn't want to fire at the moment because that IS-32 would possibly take the round. But if, if he pulls back, as he is doing now because he's reloading, then he might get a chance. Now, up in the cops, or near the cops, there's a Scorpion G and the STB-1. And the STB-1 just took out our Death Star. That's not good news. I suspect that the Scorpion G had something to do with that as well. And maybe, possibly, even the ST-2. And, in fact, the 907 has taken out the ST-2. The difficult thing about the 907 is it's very difficult to know where on the vehicle to hit it because some parts of the vehicle which show are not parts of the hitbox. I know it's amazing but if you ever watch uh, Honest Gaming and Steve Wars uh, on his videos he actually points this out that yep what actually shows on the Object 907 is not all part of the hitbox. There are some bits of the hull which are not hitboxes areas. I know it sounds confusing, but it's for real. Look it up on TaxGG if you're a bit confused about this. He's trying to get a shot into the Fosh B or the Strip S1. He fires the Strip S1 and he gets a direct hit for 293. And I think you can see the wisdom of he heading north now because um, those guys, well, we've got nobody between us and them except for the Weapon Trigger Alpha Panzer Fear. And the 907s had to come back. And it's beginning to look more and more like the enemy's going to win this one. They're two up on us at the moment. Well, they were two up, but they just lost the Striv. And our Waffentrager's pulling back. 
think he's going to try and get into that little dip. From there, you can go hull down. And McHammond has now platooned with the uh, Waffenfeger. And he fires around in. Tries to get it on the STV-1. He probably did stun him, but nothing recorded. Again, changing position. That TNH keeps poking out. And he's going to make a very, very nice splash target if McCam can get around into him. Let's see if he pulls out. Okay, he's indicating to the IS-3. He stuns the enemy. He did fire. He did let him know that he was going to fire in there. And he has the uh, IS-3-2 did kill the TNH T-Viz-51, which is good news. And it might be that the stun actually did help, but nothing's been recorded. It might have just put the TNH off at the right moment so that the uh, IS-3-2 could get the shot in. So we're still looking for that Fosh B and a batch at 25 TAP. And it's now equal score, so they, they do have a chance. 1,814 hit points of damage so far. And McCammon's pulling back his uh, FV-207, which is based on the Conqueror tank. Still looking in that direction, dialing in just in case. If he pokes his head round the corner. Oh, he's been spotted. And he's it's the Batchat. The little uh, medium tank. Like a junior version of the Batchat 25 ton. We still can't see where that Fosh B is though. The 907 is sitting directly behind us. If he went further down the tree line, he'd be much more effective. And there is the Batchat making a run. That's out. A bit late. Stunned him. It was a bit late, though. You need a long lead on targets that are moving quickly to make sure you can get the target. Fosh realises that the Waffentrager is vulnerable and he's coming out. And we're not loaded yet. But if he sits the other time... Oh, he's gone straight through the building. He's going after the weapon trigger. We have to fire. And although we stun our own teammate and hit... Well, do some splash damage. He gets the kill on the Fosh. And that puts things in our favour until, of course, the Bat Chat kills the weapon trigger. So now it's the 907 who's going in to get the kill on the Bat Chat. And I'm pretty sure he will... As I said, those 907s are difficult to kill unless you know where to put the shell. Well, he got him. And that's three versus two. But we do know the STB-1 and the Scorpion G were last seen in the north. Now, our IS-32 has been keeping an eye out on that area. And he's kind of saying to the 907 fall back because he thinks that there's uh, another enemy down that end. They might have actually gone all the way around the map, but they haven't actually. The STB-1 is coming in this direction now. And unfortunately, McCammon's just a little too close to the buildings to be effective. He's trying to get himself more room. He probably could get a shot at the STB-1. He misses. This is where that 25 second reload comes really, really anxious moments when you know one of our, your teammates is under fire. But he's taken out the STB-1 and that means now there's only one enemy left. It's the Scorpion G. And although he was last seen in the woods to the north, he could be anywhere on the map. Well, McCammon's making his way towards the enemy cap area, but it's no le too late for him to camp out on his own. And the, the Scorpion G's been spotted, but McCammon is out in the open, which means, of course, he's going to be vulnerable. Scorpion G takes a hit. Now, dial in. Get ready. Rounds out. Yes! Wins the game. I'm sure he's pleased about that. 
Here's the end of battle stats and that was an ace tanker game for McHammond in the FB207. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get uh, seven. And he also got a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. And you can see this battle was from two months ago. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. No, that actually went to the STB1 on the enemy team with 5,400, and I think that's 83. Uh, the second highest damage in the game was the weapon trade that he platooned with, with 4,917. Third highest damage was the object 907, 4,597. McCammer picked up 2,573, which means he wasn't a slouch. He was doing his job as effectively as he could. And the fact that he got a Confederate proves that as well. When it came to kills, it was the Object 907 and the Wacken Traeger who shared four kills apiece. Three kills apiece went to the STB-1 and the Batchat 25T AP. And two kills went to McCammer and to the Concept 1B on the enemy team. When it came to base XP though, it was the IS-32 did the best with 1,199. And then McCammer was second with 1,193. Third was the Object 907 with 1,157. McCammer fired 21 rounds in that game. Seven direct hits on the enemy, no penetrations. I'm afraid, yeah, that does kind of lack penetration, this, uh, this gun. 19 splashes as well. 2,573 hit points of damage, all of it done at more than 300 meters. Damage nine of the enemy, killed two, so there's a seven difference there. 1,824 hit points of stun assist off 16 stuns. He received 33,414 credits for the game, 80,000 from personal missions payout, and after ammunition resupply took away 104,501 credits for the game. 1,193 XP times 2 for the first victory took away 3,580 experience points. He said he enjoyed it. I can understand that. It's a difficult battle because he was constantly having to move north and south because the enemy was threatening from both directions. But thankfully, it all worked out well in the end. And he did have an input on getting at least two tanks uh, as well on top of the well one tank that he uh, didn't actually take the kill on that TNH he stunned him and I think he upset him enough to actually uh, have an effect that caused him to die and I certainly think he did very very well to get that hit on the uh, scorpion at the end he waited patiently to let it fully dial in but I think the funniest skill of all in that game was the Jaegeru the Jagdpanzer was unspotted at the time but he put the round down exactly where he was last seen and yes, he was still there and the shell went in and although it didn't penetrate him, it overwhelmed him. And that's why he was out of the game. So well done to McHammond. If you enjoyed that game, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And of course, please do let other people know that we've got two channels. Not just What RT Noobs, which you're watching this one on, but we've also got the general where you can watch great replays with huge numbers of kills and no commentary at all to upset you. You can just watch the game as it was last seen. Thanks for watching.